Is the new 2024.5 KTM 450 SXF Factory Edition the most technologically advanced motocross bike on the market? We just picked up ours and hit the track to find out. All right, what's up, guys? I'm Ryan Nitsen with Jesse Ziegler here at the Cycle News Studios. Right. This is our 2024 and a half KTM 450 SXF bike breakdown. Tell me what we get with this new bike. So there's a lot to talk about with the new KTM 450 SXF. This is the factory edition, so it's always kind of a preview for the new generation KTM, like the next year of that's coming out. Um, this bike is $12,449. MSRP, that's before you do freight and any dealer charges. So definitely on the expensive end. It's cutting edge. Factory editions have always been the basically latest production they can pull off in time to homologate for the upcoming Supercross season. Yep. That's really where this project came from, but it also incentivizes um, dealerships to buy bikes that are a premium. Yep. People that want the most latest and greatest thing from the KTM group, this is your opportunity to do it. Plus you get every leading edge tech available. Yeah, definitely what you said, latest and greatest really hits the mark for this bike. So $12,449 is $1,350 more expensive than a standard KTM 450 2024. Mm -hmm. This is like I said, the 2024 and a half. But with all that, you're gonna get the orange frame. You're gonna get the Red Bull graphics. You get the new shroud design. You get the connectivity unit, which is really big and new. We'll get to that in a second. You get the fork guards, the front disc guard, the gripper seat cover, the skid plate, the yeah. triple clamps, the wheels. There's a lot that goes into this. So, I mean, the wheels, the sprocket, the start device, the Akrapovich slip-on, like all that together. If you were to buy it, just buy a 24 standard and then buy all that stuff to put on it, you're going to be over 1350 bucks at your local dealer. For sure, yeah. So in some ways, you know, you bundle it, you get a little bit better deal, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. It's still really expensive, don't get me wrong, but you do get all that stuff on it as a factory edition. Yeah, it's not a poor value. It's a premium price. Yep. But if you add up all the parts that are included on any of the factory edition models from any of the three KTM group brands, you're getting your value in your spend, even though it's a high dollar amount. And so, honestly, the $10,000 is the new standard for motocross bikes. I know, it's crazy. It seems to be, which is mind-blowing. But uh, to get the leading edge one, it's twelve five. Yep. out the door or plus a little bit here and there and some tax. Um, but really, as you said, you're getting a lot for it with this bike, including, yeah. I think the main feature, the new connectivity unit, but you're also getting a brand new frame that yeah. isn't on any other model. Right. That's the big talking point to you. Like the connectivity unit and the frame are the two biggest new changes for the 24 and a half. And like we said earlier, this usually previews the 25 of what it's going to be like. So with this frame, you're going to have, we're calling them, everyone's going to call it the windows. You have the windows up by the shock tower and before we had a new frame in 2023 for KTM. Pretty much all the bikes saw that XC line, SX line. All of them saw the new frame, which redesigned the shock tower and where it mounts right. to kind of dissipate the load. Yep. Then this new frame has these windows up there. And from everything that I know, that's a really sensitive area of the bike. So if you add material or take material away, you see a lot on, of recourse, either stiffer, softer, one way or the other. Um, so this frame was homologated right before Supercross, and so I believe that the KTM guys have the option to ride this frame or the 24 standard frame. Yeah, so this isn't uncommon for updates to come in frames that seem small, like a window. Yeah. It doesn't seem like that big a deal, but it's a big deal. Yeah, and the only thing that I you know, have a big comment on is like, we just saw a new frame in 2023. Yeah. So 23 and 24 have the same frame, and then now the 24 and a half, and then likely we can uh, we can assume that the 25 will have this frame moving forward. Mm -hmm. So a pretty quick change, I think, from the KTM group. Right. And I don't think that's a good or bad thing, but clearly they're chasing some settings for yeah. being an optimized setting. We know racers have commented on it on the pro level about getting comfortable on the bike, or yeah, on this there's new. even been comments and press conferences about, you know, Aaron Plessinger has a famous one. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They were asking him what frame is he riding at a one press conference and you know, we can cut it in here. He's like, I don't even know what tires I'm riding. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure. I don't even know what tires I'm on brother. They homologated this frame right for Anaheim one that allowed them to give the KTM Husky gas, gas riders, the option, do you want to ride this frame, which is be the 24, 25 frame, or do you want to ride the 23, 24 frame, which was the Right. what's on the standard 450 SXF right now. Yeah. So 
Honestly, and really, the frame is one component here. Suspension settings have to match the yeah. frame geometry and all this stuff. And we're not super cross racing level people. Yeah, they thinned out the linkage arms a little bit too to kind of balance like, all that stuff. Kind of has to of balance yeah. out as well. And and the big point here is like, yes, it's important for the development of the bike. Yeah, is it important to you and me? Yeah, honestly, Does it matter? riding, you know, it's to me, it's kind of hard to tell like a frame, right? Like these ktm frames have to be broken in anyways with the steel the steel frame rather than the aluminum so to me honestly like i didn't feel a ton of difference with this frame i'd love to ride this back to back with the 23 standard or 24 standard frame we did not have the chance to do that um i did notice that the shock seemed to be working more like have more not exaggeration but just be working more and having freer, like more free movement yeah like having more Re, like just working more and mm -hmm. having more traction out of the rear end i feel like i'm not sure if this has to do anything with the frame but just something that i noticed and you know from my notes of riding the 23 and 24 standard ktms that's what i just noticed like right off the bat is like the old one kind of felt maybe a little more dead and this one i feel like had more it was working more and a little more comfort but i'm not sure if that was the frame or just the shock right so really structurally that's the biggest change on this bike obviously there's <clears throat> like you mentioned linkage structural changes yeah. and also suspension standard settings yeah. uh, could be spring rates could be stuff like that that they have experimented with to get the ideal setting but that's the big structural change on this bike yeah. everything else is essentially the same yeah other than shroud sort of you know yeah the new shroud design makeup stuff is cool like it looks sharp but yeah. i don't nothing like performance wise right. and honestly the way i wrote it down in our story is just if ap can't tell what frame he's on yeah. or maybe he knows what frame he's on yeah, he can tell which one he <laughs> likes but I don't think a regular guy is going to notice this frame versus that frame. Yeah. It's cool if you want the latest and grace and you need the new frame, then yeah, but I'm getting it here. 1350 bucks for any frame. Mm, I might just stick with the standard sure. 24 KTM. But what you are getting with this bike, on top of all the goodies that they bolt onto it um, that make it a good value, even yeah. though it's a high value, is the uh, connectivity unit. You yeah. know, the EC. You or C O U C O U connectivity unit off road. That's it. Connectivity unit off road, and that has actually pretty substantial benefits and coolness. Yeah, we, and we think. Funny, we were talking about it earlier how it was. We saw that on the twenty one factory edition, I believe, when it was mounted on the handlebars. I think a lot of our viewers will remember that the Husky and the KTM had that handlebar mounted phone app, and it was really cool. KTM was super excited about it, and then. Yeah. The next year it just kind of like died a quiet death and no one talked about it so this i wrote is like the 2.0 version of that it's the yeah. new updated version so you can get in on the bike and you can actually tune the engine settings kind of think of like how the yamaha and the kawasaki now have the phone apps you can adjust mapping adjust yep. engine braking all that stuff which is really cool and then on top of that with the ktm one you have all the capabilities of a lit pro built into the phone app built into the bike yes. that's literally mounted to the fender and then behind the fork uh and then you have all those capabilities built yeah. onto the bike. With zero additional hardware needed, there's one subscription you get into the KTM app. Um, I did it on the Husqvarna FE 250 Rockstar Edition. I think it was $69 per year. Um, you get the Lip Pro experience, which is amazing and underrated in the industry, in my opinion, but they have a barrier to entry at Lip Pro where you have to buy hardware sync it to your phone, make sure everything's working all the time when you ride, upload, sync, all these sort of not complicated things, yeah. but it's a barrier to entry. And now with a factory edition, that's gone. You literally set the bike up one time, yeah. turn it on, make sure it's on when you go riding the connectivity unit, come back, your phone syncs automatically. You know what your lap time is on the vet track or the main track at this track. You know what your ranking is worldwide. You yeah. know your top speed, you know what gear you were in, what your throttle position was. Like, you know a lot immediately with zero effort on your part. Yeah, I thought it was really, the using the app was actually a lot easier than I anticipated with all the features that they showed us at the media breakdown. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is a lot to take in. But using it, we set up the auto log feature. So every time I start and stop the bike, it saves that as its own moto. Right. So doing photos and stuff, it's like recognizing 13 different motos that I did. <laughs> yeah, you're doing two corners but and But that stopping. was just for yeah. photos and like video clips and stuff. Yeah, but once you actually ride it, it's really cool because I came back into the van, I turned my bike off, turned my phone on, and it's like, do you want to auto save these motos? And it would show you, boom, 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 lays them all out. And then you can go in on top of that and I'll, I'll lay some of the screen recording over this on the video, but it'll show you your lap times, which is really cool to know. Like. It's like Strava for dirt bikes. If you're yeah. a mountain bike or cyclist, you know Strava. This is like Strava for dirt bikes, which 
it's kind of what you're talking is crazy is it's taken this long to kind of have that. And yeah. I guess the Lit Pro has that, which is cool. But this is like really having it with your bike, like built in. It's really, it's a cool feature, but it shows you your RPMs, what gear you ride in. Are yeah. you spending more time and are you really shifting as much as you think you are? Um, what RPMs you're riding and where your throttle positioning is. And then built into that, Jesse, you and I are talking like it has the lap 99. So it'll yeah. show you like your current lap times. Oh, I did a five lap moto here. And this was like, if I took this line, this line, this line, I would have gotten this lap time. Sure. And that was really cool feature to have. I like that because it actually kind of lifts the cloud of uncertainty on your potential speed or potential lap time. Yeah. And you're like, man, I'm, I'm not that consistent. I need to work better every lap. And when I come back next week, I'm going to try to like slow down, be more consistent, see if my overall lap times are lower. And like, it gives you insight instead of assuming you had a good lap or yeah. assuming you're riding quote unquote fast that day. It's just there. And even if you don't use it, it's cool to look at. Yeah, like it was, it, It's cool for vet track guys for sure, which is me. Admittedly, I am a guy for this bike, for that track. And um, I love it. And not only that, the engine tuning on it yeah. is real. The engine braking settings really make a difference yeah. now instead of the old version of KTM's thing. And the suspension adjustment guidelines on there yeah. are really smart. Seg calculator you're at this track, you're having these issues. If you just read through it, it gives you suggestions to do like stuff. Most people don't worry about, but with the app, it makes it easy to access that information and those tips. So you really don't have an excuse, but to do those things and make your bike better yeah, and make the, yourself better. The software is now like the new battleground for these yeah. manufacturers. It's like, Oh, Yamaha has an app. Cowie has an app. KTM has an app now. And yeah. it's like, which app is the best, yeah. which is kind of fun. Cause they are all like really user friendly now. And the KTM one, I immediately dropped the engine braking down yeah. and I turned the throttle connectivity or throttle response up a little mm -hmm. bit just to get a little more snap and drop the engine braking. And it was like super noticeable right yeah, away. Makes a difference. And what's cool is you can save those settings into the app and say, hey, we rode at Fox and I had this setting. I think the KTM group was really smart by partnering with Lip Pro. They're going to be on the leading edge of this stuff all the time. And you don't have to rely on KTM's team to develop all this. If they can just in continue to integrate it into the ECU of the bike, it's going to be a big win. And honestly, that's kind of what the factory edition is for. It's for giving us the leading edge stuff. And thank goodness it has this on it this year, because without that, we'd kind of be like, ho-hum, it's a new KTM with some new parts on it and a slightly changed frame that the average consumer might not really care about. But as it is now, you're getting a pretty cool feature benefit yeah that's a really good point you make there it is fun the only thing i don't like about it is how much time i spent at the van looking at my stupid <laughs> phone trying to analyze you know the apps telling me if i do if i can carry a quarter of a mile an hour more speed into this corner i can cut my whole lap time down by like a second and a half and i think that was just like i could sit on my phone all day and analyze this corner and analyze like oh if i scrub this jump a little bit more i can carry more speed and like it was super fun, but I totally felt like a vet guy sitting in my van with my factory edition on my phone, just swiping through. Trying Connecting to find with out. your Starlink and, yeah. and your screen time's just skyrocketing. With, You're going to get a report at the end of the month. Yeah. Like, screen time's up 8,000%. With like, my massage gun truck. on my forearm, just sitting there. Like, <laughs> it's just, I had the full vet guy experience uh, on this day, but no, it's really welcome, cool. Welcome to my world. Yeah, I'm on the dark side now. You're only 20 years too young to do this. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it was really cool. And I think, you know, bringing this to other tracks i honestly think using this in a race setting would be super cool and mm -hmm. let's say you run two practices you say i'm going to take only these lines the first lap or the first practice and i'm going to only take these lines the second practice you could kind of put those together and it would show you hey take this line carry this speed carry this speed at least gives you some data for your guesses and you're yeah. like i think this is a faster line and you can look at it cool it's not going to work out in a race situation yeah but during your race you can try to concentrate i think for me it tells me to just stop trying so hard like yeah. slow down like if you shift a hundred times a lap it's slower than if you shift especially on this 450 yeah. once <laughs> like just chill out just ride smoother and you'll be faster when you get around the track and you think you're going fast when you're riding aggressively and like hammering down and looking super cool and blowing out berms but yeah. you're generally slower and this data and this app and this system will show you that Maybe you are faster if you're blowing out berms, but you'll know with the system, which yeah. is cool. It was pretty fun. Like it actually gave you kind of some 
like incentive to go ride rather than just right. doing like rand oh i'm gonna do five laps or i'm gonna do a moto like it actually gave you some incentive to like oh i'm gonna ride fast i'm gonna work on not shifting so much or mm -hmm. shifting a little bit more whatever your case is like it was Very pretty cool. fun like it's a fun buddy to have at the track yeah. and like if you and your buddies have the same bike you can go and like battle on the app and be like yeah. well my lap is you know two seconds a lot faster than you so that's a pretty cool feature i'm really stoked on using this yeah and i think it, it fits with the ktm development of rider aids really well when when ktm first came out with the dual map switch it was the simplest dual map switch to see it was like oh that light's on so yeah. means i'm in lap map, lap map one this light's on i'm in map two if they're blinking i'm in launch control like everybody else you were like oh i gotta put a connector in and i don't remember what what connector color means what yep. or you have to go into something else and figure it out and they just made it really easy or you had to count the blinking lights oh one blink is this map yep. two blinks you're like Come on, like just make it simple. Yep. They've done a really good job of that. Um, and the factory editions lead that charge. The new factory edition continues in the KTM 450 world of like a massively powerful motorcycle. Yeah. That's very good at handling, but requires some attention to set up, I think. Yeah, in regards to the engine, what I put in our story is like, if you were to call a CR500, like take a CR500, for example, everyone thinks that's like so fast, like yeah. it's a crazy fast bike. <laughs> but I kind of think of that as like an old like hot rod, like yeah. an old 60s, 70s hot rod that'll just like, it, you spin the wheels everywhere you go, you're sliding yeah. over, it's super like uncontrolled, but it sounds sick and it's so fast. The 450 Factory Edition is like a Mercedes AMG or a Cadillac V series. Like yeah. it's just so smooth, but you're still going so fast and it, it comes on nice The the power is super smooth and velvety, but it's like, you look down you're like, Oh my God, dude, I'm going so fast right now. Yeah. So it kind of sneaks up on you and it doesn't maybe feel super fast, but it's still a really fast motorcycle. It's not a violent power delivery. It's not hitting and snapping and blowing up stuff it's yeah. like it's it's moving it's torquey and like with the app if you want it to be like that you can yeah. you can turn the throttle <laughs> right. response up you can turn the aggressiveness up and turn all the other stuff down you can adjust the traction control the yeah. launch control the quick shift still yep you can do all that stuff so you can make it however you want but the way i liked it and the way i had it set up was just super smooth but before you know it you're still going super fast and like right. i really like this engine a lot yeah the engine's great transmission's good yeah the quick shift is polarizing but it's there and it's an option um i personally love it uh but i also don't shift a 450 enough to really use it on the 250f i love it because i'm snapping that thing around more yeah and I on want, the new but. bike you can adjust the sensitivity and because the one thing the one problem i have with the quick shift like if they took it away i'd be like oh it's a bummer that they took it away yeah but it's when they have it i'm like oh i don't necessarily need it yeah but the way you have it is like you can when you adjust it going up unless you're like almost past the red line and and you shift it beforehand it kind of like feels like you drop it down a little bit so now with the new bike you can adjust the sensitivity of it to where you can shift it it'll shift easier or or not as sensitive as yeah. fast i guess mm -hmm. and so it's a cool option to have right it's cool more tuning um the biggest uh <clears throat> polarizing factor on any of the ktm motocross bikes not the shock it's probably the air fork still yeah. even though the air fork in its 2500th edition now is pretty fantastic for most people. Yeah. There's still some holdouts that are like, oh, air fork, I don't know if I can deal with it. It's, I don't trust it, or it's harsh, or all yeah. that kind of stuff. Still, this edition, I'm a fan of it. I like the connected feel it provides and the holdup it provides in the fork. So there's never any like yawing back and forth as you kind of dive into corners. It's always got good holdup. It always has a consistent feel. Maybe there's some harsh edge sacrifice there in comfort, but to me, I'd rather have like hold up personally. I'm not against the air fork, yeah. but I also recognize there's some comfort stuff still to be gained there. Um, but what did you feel? The way I think about it is like every time I've ridden an air fork, it gets better. The front end feels light for sure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you don't have the setting right, I feel like it can feel a little bit vague. If you have it maybe too stiff or too soft, it kind of like you can, can't feel the front tire as well. Like um, skipping. Yep. And that's more like a seg setting to me is like if I don't have the seg cranked up enough or if I had too many donuts and I'm yeah. sacking it out and I'm doing like a sweeping turn yep. at higher speed, mm -hmm. it starts to like dance a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I feel like you do have to spend a little bit more time finding that setting and then you do have to kind of stay on top of it. 
Yep. And that's such like, that is just the nature of the beast with the air fork. You have to maybe kind of like, maybe don't leave it in the sun. Like they say, check it. Like you check your air pressure on yeah. your tires. It does require a little bit more work, but yep. I definitely don't think it's as far off anymore as like what it used to feel like. It's also lighter, which I think yeah, is a benefit. It keeps the weight down for but sure. But I think what we're feeling with that vagueness and the, maybe the harshness is also chassis development in general. Like they're trying to make it comfortable, but precise mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. And maybe the air fork's more sensitive to those changes. You got to be on top of your seg adjustment. Uh, rear shock settings for high speed compression make a difference there on you know how the bike handles and rides yeah. so uh there's definitely not it's not like a set it and forget it sort of chassis right. it's something you're going to check your yeah. settings make sure confirm your air pressures are right your clicker settings are right and then you know you'll be happy if you find your happy spot and stay there yeah and the new ktms they have all the finger adjusters on the fork and shock which Super is really cool, cool. Yeah. like we are making changes on the side of the track just one two go do a couple laps yeah. set it back you go ride it set it back i ride it even even seemingly dumb things like there's a sticker on the fork mm -hmm. for all the models yeah. and the recommended psi pressure for the fork you're like well i don't have to guess yeah you can tell assume it's 10.6 psi you just look at that yeah <laughs> you can tell the people who develop these bikes actually like work on these and actually ride them which like we know is true yep and it just shows like when you go to try to work on this bike or put something on it you're like oh this actually makes sense yep all right what's your verdict on this bike would you buy one <sighs> right now with the benefits that it comes with if I had the option, if I got a better deal on a 2024 standard, I would still probably pick the standard KTM 450 SXF. I'd save the 1300 bucks. The connectivity unit, you can apply to the 2023 and four. I believe it'll fit on the ECUs is what the KTM guys told us. So you can add that to the bike afterwards. And you buy like a fender kit to put the GPS sensor in it? Yeah, I think and so. Then... And then just mounts behind the fork or behind the front number plate on the fork. It's possible you could find a used or not used, a new older inventory bike at a dealership buy the parts for the connectivity unit, put it all together and probably maybe be under the MSRP of a factory edition, but you wouldn't get the acro slip on yeah. the wheels, the graphics, the orange frame, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you definitely get, you'll miss out on the vet guy drip, but, and that stuff's really it. cool. It's really cool. That bike looks awesome. It looks like, you know, yeah. I put it in our story, like you can't do this in any other motorsport where you can actually buy the bike. That's like the most similar to yeah. what the real guys are racing. And I like, that's really cool. And if you're somebody who needs the latest and greatest, then dude, you've got to have the factory edition. But right. if you're not somebody that needs that, then you could probably still get away with kind of building your own or adding some stuff to a 23 or 24. And I think you'd still be safe. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's pretty good info on the 2024.5 KTM 450 SXF factory edition. I got all that right. Um, and I thank you, Ryan, for all the info. Very yes. good stuff. Uh, a lot of you people watching our videos may not even realize that Cycle News still produces a weekly magazine every week, just like we have for over 50 years. So we do 50 issues a year, full magazine covering everything in motocross, off road, road racing, new street bikes, new adventure bikes. Uh, this motocross bike test will be in an issue now when this <clears throat> when this video goes live or shortly thereafter. Yep. Uh, it's also a free subscription. You go to cyclenews.com slash magazine, sign up for an email. You'll get an email twice a week just with a link for the issue, and you check it out on a huge monitor. The photos, the action race photos are insane. They're backlit on a TV monitor. Like, come on. It's, it's beautiful. It's free. Check it out. If you read it every week, this is what I tell people. You will know everything that's happened in the motorcycle industry and it takes you 20, 30 minutes to read the whole issue. It's yeah. like 150 pages, but to read every word in there, maybe an hour. Yeah. You learn everything that's going on in the moto industry, road race, drag race, anything. It's so cool. Like we yeah. cover literally everything. Yeah. It's a free subscription. We're not trying to sell you anything. It's just cool dirt bike stuff. So go check it out. Yep. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Ryan, again, and I'll let you do the shout out for cool. the end. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time.